wicked, awesome travel tales. We're the half an hour where you get to hear and I lost my train of thought. So I'm going <laughs> to <do that. laughs> We're going to raise a toast, and have a laugh, and tell some funny travel stories. So first, I want to introduce my co-host, Amy. Tell the viewers all about yourself. Hey, everybody. Nice to see you guys again. I hope you guys had a great week. I know we're still in lockdown, and God bless all our first responders and everybody on the front lines. We love you all and appreciate everything you're doing, and you guys are going to need a vacation when this stuff's all done for sure. So make sure you reach out to one of us and we'll probably be able to do something for you. No problem. Yeah. Anyway, I'm Amy Kaufman Rellingham. I'm out here in Western Massachusetts with Janine and happy to be a co-host with that lovely lady. And uh, representing us from the West Coast is Janine. Go ahead. Oh, and Barry from Travel That Matters. Hey, Woo so tell us a little about yourself. Well, my name is Anne Barry, and my daughter Angela and I are the co-founders of Travel That Matters. And it's all about whatever matters to you and what you want to explore in the world. We really love connection, whether it be with your destination, with your fellow travelers, or even more importantly, with yourself. Because that's at least for me, what travel is all about is the connection. It's, it's uh, life changing. It is life changing. And so is that why um, you call the travel that matters? Why does it matter to you, Ian? I and mean, you have the connection, but tell well, us more. For me, travel is almost like I'm a split personality. I have my who I am in my regular life and then the person that travels. And the person that stays home and does the normal stuff is very cautious and, you know, take my time and everything's whatever. Whereas when I'm out traveling, I, it's just like things that I would never think I could even imagine doing, I will be able to do it. It's like I kind of throw caution to the wind, not completely. And as an example of that, I didn't start traveling until I was in my early 50s. My first real international trip was in 2000. That's so amazing. in the last 20 years, I have been to over 25 countries, even though I was a late bloomer. Wow. Oh my God, that's amazing. So what, um, why did you take that first trip? How did you decide? Because I'm sure that your life was going on before that and you were busy and everything, but what gave you the courage to take the first trip? I have a fabulous friend who we were out having lunch somewhere and she said, and I think we should go to Dublin, Ireland and participate in the Dublin City Marathon. Oh, really? <laughs> we walk a lot together. That was one of the things we like to do, but we have never been runners. It's like, Mary, you are aware this thing is 26.2 miles. Right? <laughs> no, I think we ought to do it. And she is pure Irish. Her last name is Colin. So she really wanted to go to Ireland. And this was also going to help raise funds for the Arthritis Foundation. And so I said, okay. What the heck? So we started training, and that's how we ended up in Dublin in October of 2000. Wow. And you ran? Did you for run? I walked, but I did finish that's okay. the marathon. Okay. Wow. That's cool. Did she run? No. And oh. we kind of, there was a segment of people that they had never intended to run. And then, of course, there were some runners that, you know, it's depending on your stamina. So we kind of became the caretakers. <laughs> so, it was like a very slow process in the last maybe five miles. So when you actually got to the finish line, they had closed it. And oh. we didn't even have to do it. So the cleanup truck had already passed. They were already yeah. gone. <laughs> sweeping, sweeping the roads. They were like cleaning up. <laughs> so we went in, finally, we went into this. We knew we were close because we knew it was toward the city center. And we went into this hotel and just said, okay. Can you guys direct us? I mean, we were like literally within 500 yards of finishing the race. It was like, we are not quitting right. until we find the finish line. Right. So there are about six of us that ended up meeting at this corner outside this hotel because we were all lost. And we caravaned together and got our little camera click that 
because they, you know, they knew that we were out. It wasn't because they hadn't checked off our number. But. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> they didn't send out a search party yet, though. They weren't that worried. No, I, and it was, you know, by then it was dark. <laughs> it was right, dark. right. Yeah. <laughs> you could have walked 56 miles. <laughs> not even known it. Known it. That's kind of what it felt like. What time of year was it? Like when it was October 30th. Oh, so cold and dark. Yes. And we had trained in Southern California uh, in the Newport Beach area. So it, yeah. Yeah. Were you prepared for the weather? I'd ever really been out of the country. I'd been on a Caribbean and a Mexican <laughs> cruise, which I don't think really counts. So to have your first experience in a European country, it, it is, I think, what just launched me into the knowledge that travel just opens up the world to you. Yeah. And if you walked 26 miles, you saw a lot of Dublin. You saw a lot. Oh my golly. Yeah, you did. Oh yeah. And it, yeah, isn't that the, the best way to was not going into one of the pubs because the people would come out and they knew of course that everything was happening. And you're like, well, come on and have a pint. Like, <laughs> no. I was just going to ask you, are you sure it wasn't a pub crawl? <laughs> Oh, it's <laughs> <laughs> fun though. I and mean, that's a great way. That's a great first story, start, yeah. first uh, adventure. But then, and then all bets were off, right? You were like, I love it. I'm in. Is that what happened? Yeah. I mean, pretty much. I mean, it's not like it all happened at once, but I, I do have one funny story because it just shows the naivete of the two of us never having been in Europe before is obviously when you're in that part of the world, you want to see other countries. So we ended up staying at a kind of a B&B &B just outside of Salzburg, Austria. And then of course you can take the train. And so we were in Paris and we were all over the place. Mm -hmm. but I'm pretty sure it was when we were going to Paris, we did our best to figure out how to use the train system. And we got to this one stop and we were just kind of sitting in the car and everybody's getting off and we're kind of, well, I wonder when, you know, the new people are going to come on because, you know, we're ready to go. We're the next place. And then finally the conductor, and of course, luckily he spoke, spoke a little bit of English was like, ladies, this is the final stop. We've trained. <laughs> I did that. Oh my gosh. I did that in London. <laughs> I was sitting a, a double decker bus and I was on the second floor and it pulled into Victoria station. I'm sitting there, sitting there, sitting there. In this yeah, yeah. Room. And I finally went downstairs and it was empty, but luckily <laughs> they had left the door open <laughs> because we had to shut the door to the bus. And like left alone. I was up there. He didn't come to tell me, but I waited forever. I'm like, what is going on here? Like, you know, the whole time they're laughing at the American tourists oh, yeah. sitting on the bus waiting for us. <laughs> On the second floor, you could see me. Like I'm in the window, looking around. <laughs> like, oh yeah, this is hey, wow, this is really cool. I wonder what we're gonna see next. But yeah, oh my God, where's everybody? <laughs> so funny. But that's you know that's how you learn. I yeah. I mean, yeah. In Paris, we bought like 50 tickets to the met to the metro, like because we didn't know how to do. We kept pressing the button. <laughs> <laughs> And disclaimer, this is well before I was a travel advisor. So all right. You know, now we tell you how to do all this stuff. So right. Well, right. and then it's kind of one of those things where you you realize that really there's nothing really bad that can happen because the other uh, we had so many calamities, but then they led to things that were wonderful. Like we got totally lost. I didn't remember where we were, but we ended up coming on this convent that was not anything that a normal tourist would find. And it was the most amazing place. And they were so welcoming. It was just like, we, we wouldn't have found it had we not gotten lost. Yeah. But the other thing is, like I said, we were staying in this uh, kind of a mountain town outside of Salzburg. And because we just got so engrossed what was going on, we almost didn't get back to our B&B. &B. And it was like, at the moment, Mary was very spontaneous, like, go with the flow, who cares? Where I was like, oh, my God, if we don't get the right we have to get to the point because now we don't get it up. and i think about that now it's like well shoot we just would have found some place to stay right and uh -huh. then some more exploration it's not like we would have died without a toothbrush and sleeping <laughs> right. you know 
But at the time, that was where that cautious Anne came back in because I was just freaking out that, oh my gosh, we're not going to get back to a hotel. The, right, the, the right. The world was coming. Yep. It right. will be trouble. <laughs> or yeah, something, right. something will happen. And is that the best way to travel, though? Like, it is nice to have th some things planned, but also to have the time built in to yes. be spontaneous. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, you want that time to be able to make those mistakes and stumble on the best restaurant that's hidden down this alley because you're starving to death or the best pastry or glass of champagne or wine or whatever, just because you happen to stumble upon it. I That happened to me in France with a dress that I bought because we were there for the, I think it was the 73rd anniversary of D-Day. I was there with a whole bunch of family. And my sister and I were walking down this little village in France and uh, there was this little dress shop set off to the side. And she and I must have spent, I don't know, four or five hours in this teeny tiny little closet of a dress shop trying on all these dresses. And my sister and I both got the most magnificent dresses you'd ever imagine for like nothing yeah. and in France. And it's one of those really cool stories because we were just walking down these cobblestone roads and you just stumble. I'm like, oh my golly, look at this dress. Let's go. And none of everybody spoke French. We only spoke English. We had our Euros. And uh, it was one of those experiences that you remember. And I'll probably never wear that dress again because it was a commemorative dress for D-Day. So it's very period piece. And my sister has one too. So we'll, we may or may never wear them again, but it hangs in my closet. And it's one of those things every time I see it, I smile and say, I remember that day. It's yeah. yeah. It's, and sometimes um, if you buy clothing or something and you wear it, it just takes you back, but also back. nine times out of 10, someone will say, what, that is amazing. That's amazing, where'd you get that? And you get to tell the story again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I have a pair of shoes I got in Ireland the last time we were there last year in, uh, in Dublin that are the most amazing shoes I've ever seen in your entire life and the most comfortable <laughs> shoes. And every time I wear them, and I wear them a lot because they're comfortable, especially like bridal shoes and stuff because they're super comfy. And every time I wear them, I literally have people grab me and say, where did you get those shoes? And I'm like, well, I have to send you to Dublin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you asked. I'm glad you asked. Yeah. yeah. You ever want to go? <laughs> yeah. So, Anne, tell us a while, something. So you you're talking about cautious Anne. Tell us about some an experience that cautious Anne did not arrive. She wasn't even on the plane. Tell us something that happened. You must have a story well, like that. Well, that would be, and again, this seems to be kind of the story. I hadn't even put these pieces together. I have another dear friend who we had gone to have uh, lunch or whatever with, and she starts talking about how she's heard about this guy who's leading this shamanic uh, trip, retreat kind of thing to Peru, which of course would include Machu Picchu. And this one person had backed out on her and it was only like six weeks before it was going to happen. And she says, is there any chance you'd be interested in going? And without even taking a breath, I said yes, which is uh -oh. again totally not how I normally operate. And so we ended up going on this amazing journey because it was very shamanic, very ceremonial, very spiritual, very metaphysical. And one of the oh. things actually included a ceremony in the mountains of Cusco where we had a San Pedro cactus ceremony, which is a nice way of saying that we had an altered state experience. Right. And I had Are you tripping? I think that's your tripping. Right. <laughs> that was not something I had ever experienced before. And I almost chickened out because I was fearful, you know, you know, you're going to go on this psychedelic trip. But I knew I was in very safe hands. We were with the Quechua people that, I mean, this is, this was a very deep spiritual experience. And with the, the power of the group and just going with it, it, it was amazing. And then the same group when we were in Machu Picchu, I um, had not planned on it, but some of the group was going to actually hike to Wanda Picchu, which is the mountain that's on the far side of the citadel. And people actually die on this hike and I wasn't going to go. And then everybody again, cautious Anne, finally got talked out of it. And I hiked to the Temple of the Moon and I was 
67 years old. Wow. And oh my it, God, Anne. It was, it was life changing. I mean, there, there are not words to describe what that experience was like to get to the top and everyone that was together because pretty much all of our group went except for a couple people who unfortunately had gotten some kind of food poisoning. Mm. And the cactus? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Uh, no, just joking. It could have been because they were they left family. Anyway, it was cautious Anne would never have planned to do that. Right. And I really do believe that where I am in my life right now, as you know, in my 70s, that that person became that Anne because of those travel experiences. It 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 couldn't. I couldn't possibly be me without just even those two that I've shared, but there's been so many others. Like I traveled multiple times to Nicaragua by myself and experienced that country. And then again, cautious hand would not go to a Central American country where she did not speak Spanish that well and go there by herself and basically stay in a village where she was the only one there. And, you know, it. I sometimes have to stop and think that I really did those crazy things. <laughs> so how did you arrange that i'm super curious so uh you know you go to a village but were they expecting you <laughs> you know like were you just i did it was like a homestay or something like that like how, what was that what did that look like well when i say village that's probably not a really good description it was uh, a resort setting but it was before the resort was opening mm -hmm. so there really were no guests and there were homes that uh expats lived in that was in kind of a little neighborhood next door and then the fishing village was kind of on, this, on the other side of another mountain so it wasn't that i was totally alone but it again it was just something that cautious ann wouldn't do to stay someplace where uh, there were no telephones i mean we did have cell phones thank goodness but sometimes wi-fi didn't work so right it, it was um totally out of my comfort zone completely yeah. a thousand percent out of my comfort zone. And I have great memories of uh, the people I met and the Nicaraguan people are amazing. And uh, I had a lot of good times there. Yeah. That's so Anne, let me ask you a question. So you keep referring to this person as cautious Anne and I've known you now and I've gotten to know you really well. I call you my mom yeah. and uh, I consider you one of my dearest friends. So, I want to know who this cautious Anne is because I don't know her in any part of my world that I've known you and I've probably known you for three years now. So I want to know when you say cautious Anne would never do this, obviously she would because <laughs> you paid for this trip, you went on these trips, you embraced the experience, nervous, no doubt, cautious mm -hmm. for sure. As even I, when we went to Cambodia, I was very cautious on that trip. I don't know. I had painted all these stories in my head. So tell me how you made the leap from this cautious Anne person who I still don't believe exists. I think she's somewhere in there, but I think she doesn't exist. So how, how did you make that connection, though? How did you make that leap of trust, especially to go by yourself and say, got this? Well, I... I I don't have a good answer for that because it's as if I am able to trust when I'm doing something I'm passionate about. And uh. if it's something that's maybe just more routine. Uh, I mean, like if you sat down with Angela, who's, I can't read her comments because I don't know. She said she knows cautious <laughs> Anne very well. That's yeah. yeah. I mean, and Angela is your daughter, your true blood daughter, yeah. <laughs> so, and your business partner on top of it. Yeah, I mean, it is pretty much how I live my life. But Amy, you know me mostly from being in travel or when we are at a travel conference or we're in a retreat setting where it's where that passion comes out. And that's where I think, I don't know, I could have answered this question had you not asked me directly. I think it comes, it disappears when there's something that I'm passionate about. It also comes, because this was the case in every one of those stories, is I knew I had support and connection. Because ah. even though I was alone, I wasn't alone. I knew I had a safety net. I knew I had a support system. I knew I could connect. And literally, 
coming out of the hike on Wanapichu, the retreat leader literally had to put his hand on my butt to get me up the three foot tall steps. Because you, you hike in and then you have to hike out. And it was his constant support and, and the spirit of the mountain. I mean, I, anybody who's been to Machu Picchu knows what that feels like. And so it's that support and that connection. And when Mary and I were in Ireland and France and all the places that we, we had each other, we had that support and that connection. Yeah. And it, it, it makes it more fun too to have somebody rooting you on and saying, yeah. you've got this, you can do it. Um, I know a lot of women travel solo now um, and that's a great way to go if, if that's what you like. But I, I am a fan of going with somebody and sharing, being able to share it with them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think what's cool now in the travel industry is even if you are a solo traveler and a lot of women are doing that now because either their husbands are uh, not interested in traveling or whatever their situation has evolved to be is those solo travelers then come together as a unit. Mm -hmm. and those bonds are formed. So I think we've evolved into a new way to be a solo traveler. So that's should not be something that would deter you because I don't have somebody to go with. Right. Right. I, I agree with that. I hear that a lot. If I'm out at events and things like women, they're widowed or they're divorced and they say, I have money, I have the time, but I don't have anyone to go with. And it breaks my heart because I'm like, there's so many ways that you can go. So yeah. many ways. And when you're traveling in a group, especially a small group, they all have the, you all have common interests. You wouldn't be on that trip if you didn't. Exactly. And it's just got to be real selective. If you don't want to be around kids, go with a group that has all adults in it or whatever the case may be. And there's a million of us who do separate things that do special things. I mean, Janine and I have a girlfriend who does all girl trips and that's all she does is girl trips. So uh, that's cool. So that's where we'd send people. But my point is that when you're traveling alone, you're traveling with people that have a common interest and are there because they want to travel too, especially to that destination. So even though there might be some, you know, challenging personalities on that trip, but everybody's there for the same reason. Yeah. yeah. So, um, I, and I just, uh, you know, I have, I had all the admiration, respect and love for you before this. <laughs> and now I have even more. I just, I, every time we have a conversation, I just grow to love you even more. So. Just amazing. You're a badass. That's all I can say. <laughs> and you're also a great scorpion killer. <laughs> so, you're a cold bloody no, killer. <laughs> Holy cow. You say well, well, right. I, it, if anyone watched our show with Angela, you know this is Ian the scorpion killer. Yes. Yes. I think this is Angela's mom. So, you know, that's yeah, and it wasn't her first kill. We were have them in New Mexico, and my dog was very good at kind of sniffing them out so that we could. You could kill them. Yeah. Okay, I, I encourage anyone who feels like, oh, it's too late for me to travel. Oh, please, please, please take that out of your mind. And if Cautious Anne can do it, Angela will probably go thumbs up on this one. Anybody can do it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Angela says yeah. you're pretty awesome, which I agree. Yeah. I agree with that. Aww, so yeah. we only have a few minutes left. So how about in the last few minutes, either tell us, um, another favorite story or maybe a, a destination that you have in mind that you'd love to go to uh, or some some other experience that you can't wait to to do but once we are able to travel again. The biggest bucket list trip for me is Egypt. Oh, I must, must, must go to Egypt. And currently, I think my preferred mode of transportation is going to be to go on one of the river cruises. Oh, yeah. Because I also have discovered that I, as I get older, am really a fan of pampering. <laughs> and so the River Proof enables me to see that part of the world that I have wanted to see for probably 30 years now. Mm -hmm. Right. And just with the climate in that part of the world, a lot of times we couldn't and, you know, whatever. Right. But to combine a land and river cruise to Egypt that I was hoping to do it for my 75th birthday next year. I don't, with everything going on now. 
I think we can do it. We'll make it. I'll come with you, Ian. It's no problem. Oh, Tell Rick Tim. Great. You know Tim. So yeah, we'll do a little group and we'll do that. And I know um, it's in when you do river cruises for anybody who's watching that has never done one, you unpack one time. And uh, you go to a your 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 ship is your hotel. So you're constantly moving. And you talk about pampering. You're absolutely right, Anne. I like that as well. Yes. And uh, I like the little finer things. So uh, I agree with you. And then everything is you can go or not go. You can choose to go on an excursion, choose not to go right. on an excursion. Food is fantastic. Everything's included. And boom. Oh, yeah. It's done. I think that we should look into that. When's your birthday? Well, it's in February. So next year. Okay. February it might be, this, it might be later then. February is too soon, I think. So, okay, we're going to look into that. We'll just have a belated birthday party. I'm all about it right now. I'll go anywhere. <laughs> How many birthday parties can we have in a travel location? Well, 75 doesn't come all the time. Right. Right? Well, so, all right, cool. I'm going to talk to Angela. I know she's watching us. So I'm going to talk to Angela, and we're going to make this happen. Well, all right. we'll have a significant birthday next year also. So, Oh, and oh, she does. Yes. <laughs> When's her birthday? March. Okay. So All right. I think, it had, it, I think it's very likely that the ideas that we have for these milestone birthdays will be delayed. But I think when you have a milestone birthday, don't you get to experience it all year? Oh, yeah. I, I yeah. think it should be like a diamond you know, jubilee. The, the queen gets one. Why can't we? <laughs> I mean, it used to be the day. Then it was a week. Then it was a whole month. I'm all about it's going to be. It's going to be a year for you and Angela. Absolutely. I agree. Okay, done. And, <laughs> and I think that is that um, is an amazing way to celebrate oh. a milestone birthday. You think about it. I mean, at party, party smarty, right? You better oh, read. Yeah. Go someplace amazing, someplace you've always wanted to go. Because, yeah, right. yeah if not now, when? That's what I think. That's well, what I, I agree to. Yeah. More important now. I mean, if All right. we haven't figured out that uh, we don't know what's going to happen next. <laughs> yeah, true. That's true. Yeah, but we can plan. And <laughs> I might know a good travel advisor or two. <laughs> <laughs> I think or a couple I, I good suppliers. Pretty well, with it, you know, because you, both of you are fabulous. Angela and I, you know, we are fabulous, and we all fit with different people. So that's what I also love about our professional group is that if there's no competition, it's help and support, oh, no. connection and support. Here we go again. Right. Yep. There we go. Operation Absolutely. Over I'm a big believer in that in all aspects, yeah. all parts of my life. Um, so on that note, as we wrap it up, Ian, why don't you tell the viewers about your company and how they can connect with you if they want to find you on social media, on Facebook, where can they find you? Well, what is important to know is that it's travelthatmatters.net rather than .com, and it is matters is plural, and pretty much that's how you find us on all platforms is just searching on Travel That Matters. All right. And we have our electronic newsletter that we love to send out every Sunday. And you can sign up for that via our website. So, again, we'd love to connect and support our clients. Great. Excellent. Absolutely. Well, thank yeah, thanks so much for coming on. It was fun to that see you. Wow. Thank you for having me. And enjoy the rest of your day in California. And to everyone out there, thanks for tuning in to Wicked Awesome Travel Tales. We're glad to have you because you know every Good story starts with an adventure. So have a nice weekend. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Happy Mother's Bye. Day to all the moms. Happy mom.